Hiya, and welcome back to After Class, the game that teaches us that Edgar just... That man is going to make me do some sinful things. Also, happy Father's Day to you, to all of our visual novel daddies that aren't terrible. That was pretty fun, Samuel. Thank you so much for showing me around. Ha, <laughs> no problem. Let's do this again sometime. Sure. Maybe we can have Coach Gill join us next time. Sure. I'll be heading off now. Take care. See you around. He walked to his car and drove off immediately. He waited until he was out of your eyesight before walking back home. That was if you weren't stopped by a familiar voice that came from your left. Interesting companion you just had earlier. Ah! Andrew, yes? Correct. A friend of yours? Eh, just an acquaintance. He's a brother of a good friend. I see. Are you tending to the plants? Yes. No wonder they look very well taken care of. Thank you, I try. I don't know you live around here, or are you just visiting? Oh, I live here, actually. Just moved here last week. In that case, welcome to Highwell, Walter. Thank you. What about you? This is actually the first time I've seen you here. I thought this house was abandoned the first time I saw it. Yes and no. I've always owned this building. I also lived here for as long as I remember. I moved out for a while, though, and recently moved back in just yesterday. Ah, that explains why. I hope this place is treating you well. I've had ups and downs, but mostly ups. That's good. It's the power of no brain cells. It's the magical power of not having a brain cell. Also, my room is so dark. And I like it. He put his pruners back into a green toolbox before standing up while carrying it. I hope I wasn't keeping you from your plans. And not at all. I'm in no rush. Just heading home. That's nice. I have to go to work myself. Work? It's almost evening, though. <sighs> the joy of working graveyard shift. Aw, that sucks. It's not all bad. I love working at night, but sometimes I wish I could stay in bed all day, all night. <laughs> I feel you there. I have to go to work regardless. I have customers to please and bills to pay, after all. Speaking of customers, if you like giving flowers to your loved ones, feel free to visit mine. I'm a florist, in case you're wondering. I run a flower ship in the outskirts of Highwell. It's far, I know, but my flowers are the highest quality you'll ever find in these parts. I don't think I have any reasons to buy flowers, but I'll keep it in mind. What's the name of the shop? Carnation. It's got no rating on HMAPs yet, but one day. He clenched his fist with fervor. Okay, I'll get ready for work now. Talk to you later, Walter. Mm-hmm. Take care of work. Take care of work. I will. As he walked into his house with his toolbox, he took a step back, his head peeking out of the doorframe. Carnation. Don't forget. Hang on. I'm gonna check something. There's a streamer mode, and I can't turn it on. It upsets me. I won't. <laughs> I'm home. Welcome back. After today's eventful day, you managed to get home safe and sound. Lars greeted you in the living room as soon as he heard your voice. You looked like he just came out from the kitchen. It was because he smelled like oil and there was also a bit of flour on his clothes and snout. How's it going? Ugh, tired. I'll go put my things away and head over to the bathroom. I need to clean up so bad. Okay, I'll have dinner ready by the time you're done with your shower. Sounds good. Thanks, Lars. You forgot to take off your backpack and ended up bringing it with you to the bathroom. Before you started doing stupid things, you dropped it on the floor and unloaded your gym clothes. You then loaded the clean clothes into the dirty laundry hamper despite of you going to practice, and despite that, Lars already packed the clothes for you. All because of the fact that you didn't want him to know that you skipped practice and all. That will put Saleo to shame. Oh yeah, definitely. You were worried there might be no dirty clothes to hide your tracks since you helped him with it this morning, but it seemed like Lars already had some to wash tomorrow. Right, I still haven't told Anders about the notes. I should tell him that I'll give him the notes tomorrow. You pulled your phone out of the pocket and the remaining items in it while you were at it. There were some coins and some random paper. You put the coins into your coin pouch and the paper into the trash bin. Let's see. After finishing texting him, you checked for any activity before putting it onto the vanity, undressed and hopped into the shower. You took a relaxing evening shower and dried yourself off as soon as you could due to the chilly spring weather. Oh, you finished early. 
Ah, uh, yeah, it's a bit cold tonight, so I didn't spend as much time as usual. Fair enough. Oh, right, the lunchboxes. Here, thank you for the lunch, Lars. It was tasty. Glad you enjoyed it. Can I help with dinner? Uh, there's not much you could do now. I'm only waiting for the sauce to finish cooking. Aw, okay. You can help me with cleaning the kitchen later, though, if you insist on helping. <laughs> I don't insist, but I can help no problem. <laughs> the sauce is done. Let me pour it onto the meat. That really smells so good. What are we having? We're having deep fried chicken with onion sauce, omelet, and rice. Okay. So, how's your day been so far? It's been good. I'm having a fun day today. Oh, really? Something good happened at school? I, I was having fun because I skipped class. Well, it's just been a good day at school is all. That's so. You were so reluctant this morning. I just had a good time with Mark and the others. Yes. Hmm. What about your practice? Oh, yeah. Went well. Thanks for bringing my clothes into my backpack. I'd forgotten about it. Glad it helped. You took a piece of the chicken, eating it in silence as your guilt swelled inside your little heart. I'm sorry I lied. Ah. Ah. Lying to the meow meow, lying to the male wife. We are a terrible person. We are a terrible person. We do not deserve the beautiful cooking that Lars made. Because we are a terrible per We are a liar, liar, pants on fire. It does not spark joy. We're a liar, liar, and our pants are on fire. We're a horrible person. Hold on. No, no, we gotta be punished. We gotta be punished. I'm gonna Google something real quick. I wanna make sure I get it. I get it right. Alright, Lars, can we can we borrow your belt? Can we borrow your belt? I'm sure you have several questions. The answer is we're going to self-flagellate in the backyard. Out of shame. We're going to self-flagellate in the backyard out of shame. The mood shift was subtle, but it was definitely there. Lars ate his food in silence. Clearly something on his mind, but you didn't dare ask. What if he was thinking about what you told him? He could have already picked up your line, decided to say nothing about it. Oh no, we're going to whip ourselves. That's it. So, still any help with cleaning up? If you want to. Okay, so I'll wipe the counters. Got it. Do you want me to pack lunch for you tomorrow? Oh, I'd love you to, but if you don't mind. Yes! I'll pack lunch for you again for tomorrow. We said it almost made you jump. He was just brimming with joy for some reason. Sure looks happy about it. I've actually been craving for something soupy. Mm, soup. How about egg drop soup? That sounds perfect. Maybe with a bit of rice and meat? That can be done. We have meat. Yay! You talk about lunch and breakfast with Lars while cleaning up the kitchen. What a productive night. I think I'm heading to bed. This early? Yeah, busy day. Understandable. Rest up, Walter. Mm-hmm. Fall asleep before you, then good night. Heh. <laughs> Good night. The pull of the bed was so strong that you immediately plopped yourself into the bed as soon as you entered the room. One thing you did was check your phone, praying for any updates from any of your friends. Oh! There's a new message from Anders. Yay. Self-flagellation, we gotta do it nude and live on camera. Oh god, Anders is a dry texter. He's a what? 
uh, uh, thank you for the bits, I think? Yeah, uh, thank you for the bits. I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was. Like, what, what was that? Yes, we need to hydrate him. That was a little scary. It's time to drink water. Earlier it's time to that drink Anders water. Was okay. That was one thing off your mind. It's time to drink water. It's time Coach to Girl drink still water. offline since this morning, so he didn't bother to check his messages since there was nothing new. Opening his chat would only make you miss some more. My mind is fried. Today's been a day. I should probably turn in early. <sighs> Yeah, I should go do that. I hope Coach Gill is okay, wherever he is. Okay, we're gonna make a quick save. Good night. Yes, we get it. Alrighty. Come on. I gotta click. I keep forgetting that. And now for the big kitty. The big kitty himself. Mark. Good night, Walter. Oh, hi, oh, welcome. Day 10 after class. Number 15. Burger King foot lettuce. The only thing that anyone the hang on let me let me retry that let me retry that number 15 burger king foot lettuce the last thing anyone would want on their burger king burger is somebody else's foot fungus but it turns out that might be exactly what you get the room was nearly pitch black by the time the strange feeling near your yeah woke you up from your slumber gazing out the window easily revealed that it was in the middle of the night when this happened sat up and rubbed your eyes a few times while taking a quick, quick glance at lars very soft snores almost like a low growl coming from him it was loud enough to be audible to you but not loud enough to disturb your sleep thankfully i need to pee we don't want to see that because i don't fucking trust Mark. I swear to God, if Mark is here. Is he here? I can't remember. Managing to tiptoe your way towards the bathroom without waking your sleeping housemate up. You switched on the light the first thing when you got here. Yay! Thank you for the bits. Mark just pants you. Yeah, but is he booty butt naked? That is the concern. Is he booty butt naked? We don't know. Having a better look at the room thanks to the light, you quickly grabbed your thing and did the deed as soon as you could. I shouldn't have drunk so much water last night, but I was so thirsty I couldn't fall asleep. Back in your room, you saw Lars still sleeping comfortably on his mattress. You crawled back slowly to your bed, getting ready to fall back asleep. You lay on your back initially, but it was getting a bit boring just staring at the ceiling. Feeling like staying in this position would have you feeling aware of your surroundings more and more. You flipped over and slept on your side, face staring at the soft glow coming from outside the window. The more you stared at it, the sleepier you got. Your eyes felt heavier, consciousness fading slowly. Until you saw a shadow staring back at you, you froze, unsure if you should wake Lars up or hold the staring contest with the said shadow. Remember the conversation you had with Mark yesterday? You didn't want to tempt fate. The only thing you could do was ask for help, and Lars happened to be nearby. You heard yourself towards him, hoping to wake him up. Although you probably could have just tapped him a few times and that would do the job. <laughs> Walter, what's going on? There's someone out there! Out there? Pointing out the window, you saw everything but the shadow that stared at you just a while ago. I swear there was someone out there! Thankfully, Lars didn't discredit you at all, so he got up and checked the window carefully. He opened it, looking left and right, closing it after he got a good look of their surroundings. There's nothing out there. Maybe they noticed you looking and quickly ran away. Are there any security cameras around your place? No. You should ask your landlord to install them. Who knows, they might be back. It's the Slender Man. 
No, it's fucking Jeffrey Woods. It's fucking Jeff the Killer. <laughs> that is one of the most cliche creepypastas ever. And it's, oh my god. Jeff the Killer. I get it, he's a killer, but he had to have, but he, he had to have the most lowercase name imaginable. Fucking Jeffrey Woods. <laughs> I mean, he's batshit insane. Just read the, just read the creepypasta, he's batshit insane. But like... Why did he... Why is his name Jeffrey? He could have picked an awesome name. Like... Clownface. Or... The Savior. Or Sandman. But instead he chose to keep his fucking name... Jeff. <laughs> the only creepypasta that scared me, well, one of few that actually scared me was Smile Dog. You should ask your landlord to install them. Who knows? They might be back. You're right. I should talk with the landlord. Let's do that first thing in the morning. I'll go look around the house and keep watch for the rest of the night if that helps. You can take it easy and head back to sleep. You sure? It doesn't seem like they're coming back. Better to be safe than sorry. Mm, alrighty, if you're getting sleepy, then just head to bed, okay? I will. Rest up now, Walter. You got school later today. Yeah. You tucked yourself back in bed, still feeling wary from the events earlier. At least you managed to get comfortable, thanks to Lars keeping watch around the house. Before long, you found yourself drifting back to sleep steadily. When your eyes opened, the warm sun rays beamed through the window onto your face. Lars was nowhere to be found, but you... Could, but even you could tell there was some sort of activity happening Body in the kitchen. Body has been discovered! With a quick glance in the, at the phone, you could tell that someone messaged you sometime around when you were in dead sleep. Well, someone, since you got a message from two different people. One being the person you started to grow fond of, and the other was a spam message demanding you to play some kind of online slot machines through their website. Mark sent me a message. Let's see what he had to say. Not the kind of morning greetings you were used to, this... But this kind of thing was on brand for Mark, and apparently he sent it about an hour ago. Uh... Okay, let's see what Lars is up to. Before leaving the bed, there was something you had to do. The blanket used to cover your up last night needed to be folded. So you did. With a swift motion, you folded them a few times and neatly put it on top of the pillow. After that, making the bed was next in the queue. Done. You discreetly let out a cry of victory before walking towards the door as if you just did something grand. I feel fulfilled, but why does it feel like I'm forgetting something? Oh well, I'll remember it eventually. God damn it, Walter! Oh, hiya. Damn it, Walter! Hopefully. Walter, you actual dumbass. Oh, you're awake. Good morning, Lars. Morning. You slept well? Yeah, I think. Heh. <laughs> Breakfast is almost ready. You probably have time for a quick shower. Ah, yeah, I should do that. Be right back. Right. Have you called the landlord about last night? Oh, right. Thanks for reminding me. I'll do it before I shower. Don't worry about it. So that's what I was forgetting. Good thing Lars reminded me. Otherwise, I would have just forgotten all about it. Back in your room, ready to get the landlord's help, you reach for the phone to dial his number without delay. Took a few tries before he managed to reach him. He replied with the deepest voice you'd ever heard coming from someone. It's six in the morning, kid. What's going on? Oh. Sorry, uncle. Is now a bad time? Uncle? Sorry. You're fine just waking up. Just morning things. So don't keep me waiting. What's going on? You explained what you saw last night. Hmm. You sure that wasn't just your imagination? I don't know, but lately I've been feeling like someone's watching me. Why's that? 
Hey, I'm just paranoid, but I thought I saw someone staring at me yesterday around Publix, but it might have just been my imagination because they were gone in the blink of an eye. <clears throat> I don't think I'll be able to help with that. But I'll see what I can do about the situation at your place. Maybe security cameras around the house ought to do the job. Thank you. Have you checked the intercom? Stares up to a day worth of recordings. The intercom? The mic managed to pick up an pick up his audible sigh, which in turn had you feeling embarrassed for not knowing what it is. Really, Walter? Really? Mark showed you how to use it, and you already forgot how to use it. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Walter. Tell me you at least noticed the thing above next to the gate. Oh! So that's what it is. Yes! That thing can record videos, unlock the gates, receive calls from guests, and so on. That's super neat. I have to check it out later. Please do. Let me know if you find anything from it. I doubt you'll find anything, though. There were any trespassers last night. Alrighty. Well, anything else? That should be it, but I need to get ready for school. Sounds good. Sorry for waking you up again. Yeah, it's not a big de deal. See you when I get there someday today. Okay, so if I'm not home, you can just ring the bell. My friend's holding the fort, after all. That tiger friend of yours? Right. Got it. With that taken care of, you put the phone back onto the nightstand and run your way to the bathroom. And rushed your way to the bathroom. After freeing yourself of your clothes, you quickly noticed that the laundry hamper had started filling up. Lars was the one in charge of doing laundry, so he did nothing about it. He hopped into the tub, turned the knob the right way, a trickle of cold water changed to warm changed to warm stream sliding through your fur within seconds. <sighs> I probably shouldn't linger longer. The call with Uncle Ross took quite a while, and Lars said breakfast was almost ready. As you guessed, by the time you finished drying your fur, got dressed and whatnot, Lars had finished baking breakfast and was waiting for you to finish. Yeah, sorry, the phone call took me longer than I thought. It's okay, let's sit down and have breakfast together. Mm-hmm. Oh, last night, did you end up staying up the whole night, Lars? Yes, I wanted to sleep after an hour or so, but I didn't want to risk it. Oh no, now I feel bad telling you about it. Don't be, it was the right thing to do. I can nap later today after I'm done with chores, don't worry. If you say so, please take it easy today, Lars. I will. I mean it. You said you would head to bed if you got sleepy, but you still ended up staying up the whole night. I promise I'll take it easy today. How's that sound? <laughs> you promised. <laughs> How did the call go? It went well. The landlord said he'll come over t later. Can I count on you to answer the door if he came? I might be home late today. I can do that. You got plans today? Yeah, Mark asked me to clear up my schedule for today. I should be able to come back before dinner, but I'll let you know if something comes up. Okay. Thank you, Lars. Hmm. Auto <laughs> Yeah, that's allowed. <laughs> Thank you for the food. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> it was really good. I'm glad. Woo, it's still early, but I should head to school Always now. Always watching. But before you go, Lars got up and went to grab something from the countertop. It was a homemade... It was a homemade lunch packed in a small lunchbox that you never thought you had. Oh? Here, I'm not sure if you want to have lunch at school or not, so I made a small amount. I usually have lunch at the cafeteria, but this will be a nice change of pace. Thank you, Lars. Hmm. I shouldn't hold you longer. Take care and stay safe, Walter. I'll try my best. <laughs> See you later, Lars. Hold down the food for fort for me. Okay. Don't forget about the landlord coming today. <laughs> I won't. Oh, I'll start crying. Today will not be easy. Let's hope I'll be able to get through it. Whew. I forgot my keys at the shop. Hmm? Isn't that Andrew? What is he doing? Should I go back and grab it? Nah, it's too far. While you were busy thinking whether to call out to him or just observe, Andrew had hopped over toward the other side of the tall fence with Flair. Before long, he walked away. He walked off away from your prying eyes. Because he was just locked out and had to enter from the back door. Without any chance to initiate a conversation with your tiger neighbor, there was no reason for you to stay where you were currently at. You continued your journey to school. Hey. Ah, Mark, good morning. It's never good morning with me, so... Morning. <laughs> Fair enough. You've been coming to school early lately. I thought you hate school. Hmm? No. No. Don't gaslight me now. You certainly have been going to school early. Uh, are you okay? Do you need to rest up? I only came here early today. Wait. Huh? You're... Are you not pulling my leg right now? I'm not. Huh. Must be misremembering. Get that head of yours checked. Mark... Quit fucking mewing. I'm going crazy. Maybe I should. Yeah, we can do that later, but we have classes to attend for now. Pain. Tell me about it. 
I want to take a nap soon, so let me walk you to your class. Just go if you want to nap. I can go by myself. Heh, <laughs> I insist. Come. In that case, lead the way. He's locking in. He's locked in. I wish we were in the same class together, though. Heh. <laughs> You wish indeed. I'm not that fond of music appreciation class. You could say I'm not appreciating it. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Lars. Not Lars, Mark! Fuck. I'm sorry. I am a terrible person. The mogging of every... <laughs> Mars, no. The mogging of every other dateable FBN character makes him better. Yes. I will be destroyed for that. Yes, I will. I embrace destruction. <laughs> be pre prepare to be sent to Florida. <laughs> Honestly, Florida sounds a lot scarier than Brazil. Go to the backyard and whip yourself. <laughs> I'd rather do that inside where it's not hot as hell, thank you. But no, I, I think I'd much rather go to Brazil than Florida. <laughs> and don't forget to nay nay. Fine, you want to see that shit? Will it help me gain forgiveness if I do the whip? Will I will I get forgiveness if I do the whip whip nay nay? Will I gain forgiveness? Cause I'll fucking do it. Like right fucking now. I'll do that shit. Let me turn on the lights. I have them off all day and I I am turning the lights on for the first time today. So let me let me turn them on. And it is way too bright in here now. Okay, okay. Now I'm, I'm turning on. I'm turning on the screen. I'm turning on the webcam. Okay. Okay. Now watch me whip. Now watch me nay nay. Now watch me whip whip. Watch me nay nay. Okay, I'm done. Girl is an actual hell with those lights. I'm turning the lights back off. I'm turning them back off. I like it dark in here. You mean lack of skills. I have a severe lack of skills. Ah, turning emo. Girl. Lactose intolerant, oh no. This warranted yet another eye rolling, but it was so bad that it was good. You had to at least appreciate it. <laughs> Stop. Eh, that was so bad. Maybe you should come to my class instead. What class are you even taking anyway? Secret. You know, I could just look for it, right? I dare you to try. On second thought, there are way too many classrooms. Exactly. <laughs> Why secret? Eh, it's not a secret. Then, look, we got here. You're really good at stalling, you know that? I know, I'm great at my crafts. Right, right, I'll see you at lunch or something. Sounds good. I guess I got here early. Liz isn't here yet. Looking at the other side of the class, you found someone familiar. Anders was there! Sitting at the far end of the room, looking occupied with the book he was currently reading. You approached him, not because you wanted to disturb his studying session, but because you wanted to sit on the seat next to his. Oh. You're here early. <laughs> yeah, you're early as well. I always am the first to arrive, usually. Oh, wow, I could never. <laughs> It's Damumu! Yay! It's not that bad once you get used to it. Maybe, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. I love bed too much. What are you doing anyway? Just reading the textbook, getting a head start, that kind of thing. Oof, you're such a hard worker. Heh. <laughs> Unlike Mars, I...
Give it a minute. Ah, fuck. That hurts. But that is my punishment. Fire burns people. Unlike Mark. Unlike Mark. I need to study or I might fail the class. I don't want that. Ugh, now you remind me that I actually have to put an effort into this. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Haha. <laughs> I'll leave you to it then. Mm-hmm. Since Andrews was going to be busy getting a head start with the subject, you decided to waste your time doing something non-productive. Browsing the net until class started. Thanks to Mark asking you to free up your schedule for something important, you could barely contain your excitement to the point that you forgot to pay attention to the lecture. Before you knew it, the time passed in a blur and it was time for lunch. You had plans with him for lunch break, so you shoved everything in your backpack so quickly that Anders asked if you were okay. I'm okay, just gotta run because I have a plan with someone. <laughs> okay then. Without further delay, you dashed out of the classroom. At least you attempted to. Not so fast, Walter. Miss Liz, to whom the sound belonged sat on top of her desk in a demanding way. Whatever image she was going to paint herself as, it wasn't working as well as she thought. A word before you go. Hmm? What's up, Miss Liz? You look elated. Something good happened. <laughs> More or less, I'm about to go meet a friend. That's good. I'm glad you come here feeling excited. But not so when you get too excited and couldn't pay attention to my lecture. We notice the things you do back here, even when we don't react to them, you know. I'm sorry. Don't be. It's not my concern whether you pay attention to my class or not, but since we're friends outside of this facility, I don't want you to fail my class. I don't want you to fail my class. Especially my class. Got it! Okay. And now you gotta have fun. Oh, if you see Mr. Parker, tell him I need him to wait for me before going home today. Okay. Don't forget. I won't. <laughs> Mark hasn't finished it's his class yet. It's time to drink water. I guess I'll wait here until then. Oh. It's time to drink water. Mr. Parker, good timing. Miss Liz it's asked me to tell you something. Water. Oh, well, I'm here anyway. I could just ask you. It's time to drink that's water. That's true, that's true. But what are you doing here? I was wondering if you were free is all. I have a lunch plan with Mark, but I should be free after second period. I see, I see. Alrighty. Do you need me for something? No, no, can wait. <laughs> In that case, I'll head inside and talk to Liz. Okay, Mr. Parker, let me know when you're free later. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Fucking lag. The way he waddled across the classroom told you that he wasn't quite satisfied with the answer you gave him. Maybe he was hoping to spend some time with you, but someone else hadn't beaten had Holy beaten shit, to it. How did you do that echoed voice? Um It's simple. Okay. Um So I switched microphones. That should tell you already. I switched microphones, I'm using an XLR mic. But I have to do it through an audio interface. There is something on my audio interface that allows me to apply echo to the microphone inputs. As such, I have I now have an echoey voice. And now I don't. It's pretty fun. If you want to do it without actually going through the effort of setting it all up through an audio interface with echo built in, you can just apply a reverb effect. It does the same thing. And the said person was walking towards you with a smirk on his face. Yo, I headed here as soon as I could. Ah! Hmm? Mr. Stone, what's he doing here? Just talking with Miss Liz, nothing interesting. Cool. For some reason, you felt like hiding the truth from your lion friend. If he knew you had just turned on Mr. Parker, he would make fun of him one way or another. You didn't want to contribute to Mark's growing list of teases and snides. I ran into Avi on my way here. Should have looked at his face. He was tired and ugly. That's the thing you talked about. Pfft. There's no way he can be ugly. That guy is dashing. More dashing than me. No comment. You sound like you're presenting something to the audience with that voice. Yeah. Oi. I brought my own lunch, by the way. Of course you did. That works out, though. Find some place where we can sit while I grab my food. Okay, he's... Hmm. 
Scouting for an empty seat in a crowded place like this wasn't easy. Took you a few tries of looking around until you find one. Even so, that was thanks to an acquaintance that you managed to sit down. Thanks, Jake. No problem. I just happened to be here today. You waiting for Mark? Yeah, he's there grabbing his food. You've been hanging out with him nowadays, huh? Are you two a thing now? W what? No! You say no, but your face says... Not yet. Well, it's not my business who you end up with. How do you know Mark, by the way? Who doesn't know Mark is a more fitting question. He's the kind of dude that everyone knows about. Don't you think he stands out a little bit too much? Come to think of it, he does stand out a little bit. Him and that Anders guy. The only difference that you can feel is arrogance seeping out. With him being a Thornton, that's a given, I guess. Being, by being a Thornton, you mean the wealth they possess? Yeah, they basically run this town, which makes them different than a, from us plebs. Pfft, plebs. His words, not mine. Having a conversation about how great I am, Jake? <laughs> you wish, Mark. Well, I'm gonna go get a smoke now. You're welcome. Thanks for the seat, Jake. Yep. Your holy lungs are gonna be the end of you someday, you know. I know, I know! That fucker. <laughs> He's not a bad person. He's not, but that doesn't make him less of... I'm not saying that. Don't worry, the feelings are mutual. That's just how we refer to each other. I see. So, what did your personal chef made you? Let's see. A whiff of pleasant, slightly charred aroma invaded your nose as soon as you opened the cover. The way the food was presented looked quite heavenly, as and it made your stomach rumble instantly. Although you didn't know what this was. I don't know. Mark rolled his eyes and took a look at your lunch. Pheh. <laughs> It's grilled potatoes with whatever sauce, so it's some kind of dip as well. Nothing can beat the plebeian feel of mass-produced cafeteria feel. I, well, I guess I don't have to share this with you. Doesn't mean I won't have a taste of this... thing. Without hesitation, Mark scooped out some of your lunch with his fork, along with a quarter of the dip that was placed in a separate compartment within the container. Good thing you had someone to share your lunch with, Walter. I don't know if I've told you yet, but eating a packed lunch out of a putterware container on your own would be a depressing experience. What? The fuck, law Mark? Bitch! Fuck off! Bitch? Don't fucking test me. I will burn you. No, oh, shit, hang on. There we go. I will burn you. Double spanking to Mars. More like double death. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Do you want some of my plebeian food? Sure! <laughs> I'm gonna post why I'm not going to do that. Cats, I'm going to post why I'm not going to do that in the Discord server. Sure! <clears throat> uh, I'm stuffed. Ha, <laughs> weak. Right, right, I'm weak, you're strong. <laughs> you got it. I think we should head over classes now, no? Yeah. Where should we meet later? Wait for me over the school fields if you get out early. Oh, okay then. Well, let's go back to our classes. I trust you don't need, to need me to accompany you, do you? <laughs> I can get there just fine, no worries. Good, because I'm desperate for a leak. See you later. Just like that, he dashed away, leaving no trace. There was no reason for you to be here anymore, so you stacked the train plates on top of each other to make the school staff's job easier. How considerate. Ooh, okay. Here goes. Always feels so strange to go to a class without Mark around. I never realized how often we're being together until now. 
Wouldn't mind if that if we did it all the time. Is the fucker going to confess? Second period went by smoothly and on a good note. You neither had problems interacting with students nor understanding the lecture. It was good, even though you'd prefer having someone you were already familiar with in that class. But this was part of the university experience, making new friends and whatnot. No, is he like going to confess as in... Walter. <laughs> I love you, Walter. Oh, if only. I should head to the soccer fields. I don't want to make them wait. You packed your things into your backpack, said goodbye to your classmates, and walked to the place you were supposed to meet Mark at. It doesn't seem like Mark is here yet. Unsure how long you should be waiting for Mark, you sat down in the middle of the field, just taking it easy. Your moments of peace passed by, then someone poked you from behind. It was a person you were waiting for, but it was none other than Avi. Hey. Avi, what are you doing here? I was on my way home when I saw you sitting all by yourself in the fields. Just thought I'd check up on you. Everything good? Yeah, just waiting for Mark. Ah, right. He told me he'd be busy today. Yeah, I hope he didn't cancel your plans only to hang out with me. No, he's not that kind of person. Okay, that's good. You mind if I sit here for a bit? Not at all. You two have been hanging out often, so I'll assume things are going well between you. Mm-hmm. That's good. Dude doesn't have that many real friends, I'm, so I'm glad that you're here. I wouldn't know. I feel like he knows everyone. He does, but that doesn't mean he's good friends with them. Most of them are friends with him because they know he's a Thornton. Another reason is because he's smart, so they initially wanted to befriend him so he would share his answers. Little do they know that he's a major pain in the ass and is a trickster, so he misguided them with wrong answers. <laughs> that sounds like something he would do. Yeah, and that's why people don't like him, even though they try to befriend him for their own benefits at first. Which were you again? I don't remember you telling me at the beach. I sort of did. It was neither. He just thought I looked pitiful and decided to ask if he could sit next to me. Oh, I see now. Of course he did. <laughs> I know, right? I didn't quite like him at first. I thought he was just another snobbish, privileged kid who wanted to bully me. And I was right. What? No way. That's what happened. He was a vain, privileged snob and a big bully who enjoyed teasing me on top of that. Even though, he, even so, he was different. He did it simply to interact with me in his own way. Not out of malice, so that I could be more open and comfortable around him. I genuinely hope the best for him, even though he's a major dick at times. Ah, that's what you meant. Yeah, I can see him doing that. And same, haha. <laughs> I don't think I've asked this, but what's the big deal with him being a Thornton? You've been to his place, right? Have you connected the pieces yet? They are crazy rich. Most of the businesses here in Highwell are owned by his family, and I hear almost half of the land belongs to them. No way. Enjoying talking about me much? <coughs> can you stop sneaking around and eavesdropping on other people's conversations? Not if you're sitting in public. It's pretty much for everyone. I'm not going to argue with you. There's no winning. I didn't hear much. Fine. I just got here. Well, now that the guy's here, I'll suppose I'll head home now. Oh, okay, Avi. See you guys tomorrow. Laters. Okay, what are we going to do? Come here with me. Mark took you somewhere entirely different, looking through the fence of the soccer field. What the? Surprised? Welcome to my secret spot. Are we still on Highwell? I assure you, we are. That's crazy, this place looks beautiful. How'd you come across this place? Just by chance. <laughs> nah, there's no way. Don't tell me your family owns this land here. What did Avi tell you? That your family owns almost half of the land in Highwell? <sighs> Fine. This is our private property. I learned so many things about you, and almost all of them are mind-blowing. I know, we're amazing, Rich, yada yada. I don't mean like that, Mark. I don't care what your family does. You're just the same annoying Mark I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's good to know. Anyway, we need to go somewhere else before I can confirm something about your pendant. Oh, where? That shack over there. I might be able to find something I lost a while ago. Before you ask, no, it's not my pocket watch, but a part of it. Okay. In front of you was a rundown shack. It looked so unstable and old, as if the only thing that was holding it up were these beams. Even so, they were only, bearing man they were only barely managing that. You're not asking me to go inside, are you? I'm glad we're on the same page. You're exactly right. We're heading in. But it looks like it's going to give out soon. A single gust would topple it down. You're being too dramatic. You're going in whether you like it or not. No! See, we're fine. <coughs> For now. It'll be fine about this anyway when I was a kid. You should trust in my house building capabilities. You did this alone? Of course not, stupid. I had my dad help with this. Oh. Anyway, I remember bringing my pocket watch with me. Pocket watch when I was here with Anders. 
you were here with Anders. God, it's so dusty. Yeah. Although I don't remember it being this messy. Did someone recently ransack the place? It doesn't seem like it's recent. Everything is as dusty as ever. Mm hmm? Mark looked around, running his delicate finger against many surfaces. Curious, you took a walk in this area that seemed like a family room. There were many empty picture frames and miscellaneous trinkets without zero significance. And found something that you thought of a note. It was beyond saving. Either dust or fire claimed the picture. Couldn't see what was in it. The frames were melted as well. Is there a fire here, Mark? Walter, come here. What is it? Look at this crafting table. You use anything off with it? Other than it being super dusty? Wait, over here! It looks like a few things should have been there. See this See this here has less dust in various shapes. Exactly. Someone did come here. Do you think it's a looter? It's possible. Maybe I should tell my dad about it. Hmm? Did you hear that? Yeah, it sounded like some kind of metal. It's coming from the entrance. Let's give it a look. Wait, there's something over there! Ah, so that's where it's been. Cool, we can- now we can leave this place. Oh, let's head out then. Hurry! Finally, I didn't quite like the feel of that shack. Yeah, me neither. Almost felt like someone was spying on us the whole time. I'm glad it wasn't only me. As soon as you told me someone had been here, I didn't feel safe at all. Let's talk about this somewhere more civilized. Too many mosquitoes here. Agreed. I didn't expect us to be here. I mean, do you have any other better place? No, it's just so close to my house. Why don't we just go there? I want to see what's the deal with this place. I know someone who's crazy about the instant noodles here. Mark took you to someplace very familiar. It was a neighborhood around your area. Since you wanted to try the food here, you had no choice but to join him to sate his curiosity. What surprised you wasn't how close this area was to your house, but the fact that someone you We're knew lived near here. Talking. Mark told you, you that the place across the store belonged to Liz and Miss Parker. Okay, now you can tell me what's to deal with this thing, so how does it relate to my pendant? Here, take a look at it. He handed you the metal piece you found in the abandoned shack. Upon quick inspection, it was just that, a piece of metal. Maybe it looked like a cover of some sort, and it was certainly shiny. You flipped it around and looked at the inner part that formed a concave surface. There was something inscribed onto it. GT, where have I seen it before? You don't remember? Uh, it's from this drawing you saw at my place. Oh, this pendant drawing, I remember now. Goodness, that brain of yours. Doesn't matter, let me see your pendant again. You removed the chains from the pendant, handing it over to Mark. You rotated the part where the centerpiece would slide out of its socket and started inspecting it again. Still think it's because that centerpiece is loose. I don't think so. You see this part over here? There are several compartments with a specific shape. I think you're supposed to insert something here. Coincidentally, I think the clock hands from my pocket watch look identical. It's a shame that I lost it. I would like to test it out. Do <sighs> you have any news any about your pocket watch? Not yet. Damn, that sucks. Let's head back to Waterfront and look for it. Not so fast. Even if we found the pocket watch, we would still need seven other parts of it. Well, actually six. I just remembered that my twin might have had the same thing. Wait, really? How? No idea. I guess he also got one from our great-grandfather. Ugh, this doesn't make any sense. Tell me about it. Can you ask your twin if he also got one? I need to make sure about a certain thing. Huh? My twin? Herbert? Yeah, maybe he knows something about it. Ugh, that's going to be difficult. Why? You don't talk with him anymore? Yeah, our relationship has been rocky for as long as I can remember. That sucks. Maybe your parents can help me with that. Yeah, I'll call them later. Make sure you do. I really want to know the secret behind your pendant. Ugh, that's the reason I'm here to begin with. Because my parents know something I don't. They sent me here and asked me to keep the pendant with me at all times. What are you thinking about? Ah, just about how I'm going to approach my parents later. Couldn't it be weird asking about the pendant out of nowhere? I'll leave that one to you. Our food is here. Finally. It smells good. It looks average. Let's see if this thing is worth the hype. Ooh, that's quite nice. I agree. It had a nostalgic feel to it. I wasn't expecting that. You tried finishing it as fast as you could, but it wasn't fast enough. The sky had turned dark by the time you were done. It seemed like you wouldn't be eating Lars's dinner tonight, thanks to the copious amount of instant noodle from this small shop. Well, was it worth the hype? Mm, it's all right. It's all right, he said. You just inhaled it. I was hungry is all. Ah, shoot. I forgot I'm supposed to meet a guest. Great a guest at home. Oh, you have to go now? Yeah, let me pay the bill real quick and we can leave. My treat, no worries. Sounds good. Thank you, Mark. You sat there while he took care of the... You sat there and took... While he took care of the bill. He came back with spare change in his hand, which he put into his pocket soon after. Ready to go? Do you want me to walk you to the bus stop? Up to you. Go with him or head home.
Sure, let's go. I'll let Lars know about dinner. Heh, <laughs> okay. Ready. I have a question, hmm? Once you've finished figuring out what to do with your pendant, what's next? Good question. I suppose I don't know. I had a dream about making a promise with a kid that I don't know. I said I'd be able to remember him as long as I have it. How ironic. It's possible. I want to know who it was and what was the meaning of this. Maybe in the end it was nothing but a mere pendant. That's possible, yeah. Well, I'll change the question to something else. If you found the person, what would you do? I don't know if I was only making it up or if it was actually something he said, but promised he'd come find me and marry me. <laughs> That's some stupid promise. Heh. <laughs> What if it was you who made the promise? I wouldn't say something like that. Well, let's pretend you were actually him. Guess we're married. What about you? What if I turned out to be the kid? Pfft, sure. Good answer. Oh, the bus is here. I guess it's goodbye. Don't say like we're not going to see each other anymore. Ha! <laughs> see you tomorrow, then. See you tomorrow. Once Mark got on the bus, you waited until it left before heading back home all by yourself. Make sure not to stray away this time, because it could be dangerous for you to do so. I'm home. As soon as he heard your voice, Lars rushed to greet you. He was in the kitchen before this, it looked like. Welcome back. I didn't see the landlord anywhere. Did he come? Uh, yeah, he left about five minutes ago. I see, I must have missed him. Oh, right. He took the lunchbox out of the backpack. Thanks for lunch today, Lars. It was super tasty. I'm glad. I know you just had dinner, but I'm about to have one myself, so if you want to join me in the kitchen, you're welcome to. I might just do that, but I want to take a shower first. I can wait. Take your time. No. Nah, actually. Let's head to the kitchen first. Can't have your food getting cold just because. Sounds good. Oh, this smells good. What did you make? It's the same as your lunch, but I tweaked it a little bit. Oh, man. I should have said yes to dinner. You can have mine if you want. I'm kidding, but can I have a bite? Go ahead. With Lars's permission, you got a spoonful of the grilled potatoes with an extra twist to it. Couldn't figure out what it was, but it had, like, but it had a fish-like texture. Oh, is this fish? Yes, salmon specifically. I also used mentai sauce that I bought at Publix instead. This, this is really good. Can we have the same thing tomorrow? Uh, sure, if you want to. How about salmon mentai rice for lunch? Yes, please. But the name is a little weird. It sounds weirdly lewd. I think you're mistaking it for something else. Oh, really? Yeah, it's close enough, though. Oops. Ha! <laughs> really didn't have to stay here the whole time, Walter. Nah, I didn't mind. Personally, I think it's sad to have dinner all by yourself, especially when you have a housemate. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I used to have a dinner by myself, but I can see what you mean. Having dinner with someone is much, much more enjoyable compared to eating alone. Yeah, I get to taste some good food too, so it's a win for me. I suppose that's true. Okay, I wiped the table. What's next? I'll take it from here. Didn't you say you wanted to take a shower? Oh yeah, I should do that before it gets too late. Alrighty. Thanks for helping, Walter. No problem. You folded the cloth in half and put it on the countertops next to the sink before making your way to the bathroom. Before hopping into the shower, you notice a mostly empty laundry hamper when you toss the clothes in. Lars did laundry today, it seemed like. Once the water started to flow, you waited a few seconds for it to turn warm so that you wouldn't have to freeze your ass off. As the water ran against your fur, your mind started to wander about today. What an eventful day today was. So many things happened today, and all of them were memorable in their own way. I shouldn't take a long shower. Still have to call my parents tonight before they fall asleep. With that in mind, you did your shower routine faster than you normally would and headed back into your room as soon as you dried yourself off with a towel. You can head to the bathroom if you need to. I'll do that. I have to clean my teeth as well. Mm-hmm. After Lars left the room, you dropped the towel without a care in the world, shifting, sifting through the closet for something suitable to wear tonight. There was no reason for you to be picky since you'd be sleeping soon enough, but you did because you felt like doing it anyway. Once you were all dressed up and looking fresh, you sat back in your bed and picked up your phone, looking to dial your mom to see if she was still up. Hello, who is this? It's me, Walter. Walter Graham. Uh, good evening, dear. You don't usually call us. What's going on? Not much, I'm just missing you guys. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Your dad isn't home tonight, so I'm holding the fort. Ah, I see. Where is he? Off for work. I don't know about details, sadly. Oh, uh, okay. What about Herbert? He's doing good. I haven't talked to him in a while. Do you think I can talk with him? Of course! Let me give the phone to him. Okay. Sorry, dear. He said he's busy. Aw, that's okay. I guess I'll call him on his number later. Yeah, that's a good idea. How are things at home, by the way? How's work? I miss home. <laughs> Just remember that, alright, dear? I love you. Okay, Mama, keep that in mind. Love you, too. 
call ended on a good note. While you weren't able to reach Herbert tonight, you managed to catch up with your mom. You didn't realize how much you missed her, and the fact that you spared some time to call her mate made your and her night better. You also texted Mark to say goodnight to him because you must wake up for school tomorrow. After that was done, you locked your the phone with stride, resisting the urge to scroll the reels endlessly. That did the job quite well. Looking to your right, your target friend was already fast asleep. His soft, growl-like snores were the proof he was knocked out tight. <laughs> Good night, Lars. See, I'd start crying. Day 11. How many times has it been? I don't know, 10, 11? I've stopped keeping track. Damn, how are we going to get out of this situation? I guess we'll just keep trying until we make it. By the time you opened your eyes, it was already bright outside. You got up, reaching for the phone, hoping to see messages from anyone. There was one from Mark, apparently. Better than nothing at all, you quickly opened the text to see what it was about. It said that this message was received two minutes ago. By doing the math you were capable of doing upon waking up, you had an estimate for when he would arrive. In about half an hour, give or take. You sent him a quick reply before you made your bed and headed towards the kitchen, where you assumed Lars would be. You woke up. Good morning, Walter. Good morning, Lars. Are you making breakfast? Do you need help? Yeah, I've just finished the preparation, so I have it covered. No worries. Oh. Oh. Hmm? Mark is coming over. Do you think this will be enough for him as well? In that case, I'll add some more things. I could use some help rinsing the greens, then. Oh, on it. What do you need? Try some bok choy. Grab me some frozen chicken thighs as well. Made your way towards the fridge to look for the said vegetables he needed help with. She had trouble looking for what she needed. Ever since Lars moved in with you, the fridge was always packed with groceries. Okay, the meat is there, but I don't see any bok choy. She'll be in the vegetable drawer. I remember putting them there. Ah, okay. For some reason, I didn't think of checking the drawer. It literally said vegetables and fruits here. Even so, you didn't know what to look for. Admittedly, you didn't know what a bok choy was and how it looked like. So you quietly looked on the internet and you found your answer quite instantly. Ah, so that's what they are called. Grabbed a bunch of those and the frozen meat out of the fridge, putting it on the counter next to the sink for easier access. Since Lars wanted you to rinse this thing, you grabbed a mesh bowl solely for washing fruits and vegetables and put the bok choy into it. The water ran down the tap as soon as you turned the knob. You used your finger to sift through the leaves and ensure all parts of it were free of grime and possibly caterpillars that feed on leafy greens. We're going to stop it for the ad when we break from the ads. Oh shit, someone got banned? I didn't even notice that there was a bot. I didn't even notice there was a bot. I'm gonna name the bot Bok Choi. It ain't no La Critura. It's a Bot Critura. Once you'd washed it thoroughly, you let it sit in the sink so that the countertop would stay dry. I'm done cleaning them, Lars. What's next? Just leave it there. I can take it from here. Okay. Oh, okay. The first thing you did was grabbing your phone to check for the time. Washing the bok choy only took you about a minute, but there was still a bit of time before Mark arrived. Guess I can get ready for school. I'll wait for Mark. Remembering that Lars had finished the laundry, but you didn't see it anywhere in your room. Look to your right, discovering a stack of neatly folded clothes inside the hamper signed for clean clothes. I should actually bring it to my room after I'm done showering. I can have him do all the chores by himself. After undressing yourself and tossing the clothes you wore the whole night into the laundry hamper, you hopped into the shower and let the warm water wash over your body. Just like usual, you forgot to bring clean clothes before heading in, so you'd have to go back to your room half-naked to grab a new pair. But today was your lucky day. There was a stack of it in the laundry area. Having, f having finished getting dressed for the day, you headed back into your room while carrying the same stack of clean clothes. Oof. You carefully walked towards the bed, making sure it stayed intact the whole time until you you could finally dump the clothes on the bed. You divided the stack into two so that they would be more stable. Ooh, that should do it. Now back to the kitchen. Mark? Yo. How did you get here? With my legs. Touche. When did you get here anyway? Right when you finished showering, Big Kitty opened the door for me. Son of a bitch. I you were right. You were right. Lars is Big Kitty. You're right. That means Mark is Mr. Meow Meow.
Big Kitty opened the door for me. I saw you carrying the clothes in your room. Oh. I think I wasn't doing anything weird. I about to ask if you had breakfast or not, but I had Lars making breakfast for you as well. I had buttered toast on my way here, but it was barely filling. Okay, let's have some breakfast then. I'm sure it's ready. Yo, Mr. Chef, is our breakfast done? In a bit. You two can sit down now. Awesome. Lars! He's angry. Big Kitty is angry. Do we just want to do the rest of the update today, tonight, or just finish it all tomorrow? Because either way, I don't mind. Yeah, we ball. We're doing it all tonight. Mark had made himself at home without you telling him, so he sat down, gesturing you to sit next to him while Lars set down the plates onto the table. If anything, you felt like a guest from how he acted. Once it was finished being set up, Lars sat down across you. Proud of his creation, but also anxious if your guest would enjoy having greens on his plate. Hope you don't mind greens on your food. The only way to know was asking him directly, so he did. Meh. Greens. Lars froze up, unable to come up with words. I'm kidding. I know the limits of my entitlement. Is that a good thing? It's something. No. Feeling entitled can create more problems often than not. And? You! The food looks good, so let's eat before we spend too long arguing, yeah? I'm sorry. Right, my bad. I was just trying to be quirky, I guess. It's okay. <laughs> the music is not helping. So, any reason why you're here early in the morning? I just left home earlier than usual and I don't feel like going to school just yet. You're the only person I'm close with who lives near the school, so there's no reason to not visit you. I see. By the way, what's with the security cameras? There are a lot of them outside. I'm surprised you noticed. I've been here off to know when something changed. I... Well, I believe there's no harm in telling this guy about yesterday. Okay, so... You and Lars explained the situation yesterday that resulted in you calling your landlord to install the security camera system. Hmm. For whatever reason, Mark was being way too calm about the news. The reaction was valid, if not slightly suspicious, as if it wasn't something new to him. But considering the recent situation about him regarding you, it was understandable. You are being surprisingly calm about this. Yeah, the trespassing problem has been surging recently around Highwell. I just didn't think they would trespass Walter's house of all places. Besides, I have my reasons. Mark shot a quick glance at you, and it took you less than a second to understand what he meant. He was referring to the stalker situation and the suspicious calls he'd been getting regarding you. If we didn't have any intentions of telling Lars about it, it would only make sense if you keep quiet about it too. I hope the trespasser wasn't you. Hey, I might jump over Walter's and others' fences and gates, but I won't act suspicious around anyone's living quarters. Lies. Hmm. Did you check out the intercom by chance? I think that model can record up to a day or two if I recall correctly. I did nothing out of the ordinary. Oh, I didn't know you checked it. I honestly forgot. Well, let's hope the trespasser is stupid enough to walk straight towards your place without noticing the cameras. Although I honestly doubt it. Also, I don't think there are any blind spots from what I've seen, but maybe they would somehow find one. My only concern is finding the reason they are trespassing. Did you piss off anyone, Walter? No! I literally just got here two weeks ago! How about back home? Uh, I don't think so. Hmm. Oh, well, we'll figure it out sooner or later. Just like that, he continued eating the breakfast without care in the world. Lars shrugged and shook his head at you, suggesting you to do the same. Thank you for the food. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Meh, it's fine. Would have been more believable if you didn't finish first and asked for seconds. I said what I said. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, Mark. You two are leaving for school, yes? Well, I'll take care of the dishes, don't worry. Are you sure we don't mind helping? You don't mind helping. Really? Really? It's okay, I don't mind. You heard the guy, now let's go to school. He stopped pushing me! <laughs> he has one enemy, Talbot. <laughs> I can walk by myself, you know. Yeah, yeah, let's go now. Mark grew uneasy as he stepped into this part of the neighborhood, eyeing Andrew's residence the whole time during your walk with him at the alley. Still didn't get what's the deal with him being wary around Andrew. Lars as well. Maybe it had something to do with cats being territorial about their possessions. <gasps> Does that mean? What? I think nothing was just thinking to myself. Weirdo. Heh. <laughs> Wanna grab some milk tea? I'll pass for now. Not thirsty yet. 
fine. Milk tea is boring and doesn't even taste good in the morning anyway. You could just get it if you want to. I don't mind waiting. There's no fun drinking something fun all by yourself. Mark, you are a... You're a bitch. Walter, get some fucking... Wait. We know Walter has a peanut allergy, but does he also... But is he also lactose intolerant? Hang on. You know what? I'm gonna sing a song. I'm gonna sing a little song. Just for this. <clears throat> Mark is a bitch. I should have known better. If I had a wish, I would have never effed around. When I saw the pics of you and Lars, I felt the knife twist. Mark is a bitch. And he's with us right now. <laughs> You're leaving this. That is the last joke I'm making. There's no fun drinking something all by yourself. But you just said they were boring. Meh. Detour or school? Can we eat Mark's nose? Yes. Yeah, let's take a detour. Quality was literally a few steps away, and since you're already here, might as well get something to drink and say hello to your boss and co-workers. You were their temporary, honorary employee, remember? It was free labor as well. Okay, okay, stop pouting, let's get something to drink. I knew you couldn't resist the temptations of morning milk tea. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Hiya. You two made your way towards quality, half expecting to see your friend Brock attending the counter, but to your surprise, he wasn't there. Well, Shiri, fancy seeing you again. If you're looking for Brock, he's not here. None. No, we're not looking for any broke Brock block. Broke Brock bloke. Ordering something to drink as customers. Broke bloke. Splendid. What do you feel like having this fine morning? I'll have... Signature palm sugar milk tea. Order the same thing or order something different. Yeah. Me too. Make that too. Two cups of signature palm sugar milk tea. Anything else, mon chéri? That's it. Wait, I have a membership card. Perfect! Let me get you stamped, darling. You now have two stamps collected out of ten stamps. <laughs> After Mark paid for his drink and yours as well, the staff relayed the order for the kitchen staff while stamping your membership card. You two sat down in nearby seats waiting for the order to be made. I wonder where Brock is. Last time I saw him, he wasn't working here as well. Did he quit? Don't know, don't care. Jeez. He was giving you all the attitude today, it seemed. You and Mark waited until the order was ready before continuing your way to school while sipping the drinks you just bought. Wasn't that refreshing or what? Right, right. You just didn't want to admit that was a good purchase. No, I admit it was good. Then, nothing. Should we head into the classroom? Unless you have anything else to do here. Yes, we should. Let's go then. <laughs> Excuse me. Hmm? McGrath. Oh, you know me. Mark didn't seem like he appreciated McGrath's appearance at all. Especially that he felt like he needed to step in front of you. What do you want? Just asking if either of you know where Gil is. No. We don't know. I see. Thank you for your time. I'd prefer if you refer to me as Logan instead of my family name. Let's head him before more people disturb us. Okay. Seemed annoyed. Best not to try it. Best not to poke the angry line for now. So, as if he knew what you were going to ask him, he answered without letting you finish your sentence. He's Logan McGrath. His family deals with shady business. Ah. But I haven't seen him since Tuesday. I wonder where he is. Coach Gill, I mean. You don't have to clarify it. I know who you were talking about. Right. Yeah, he's probably giving some head. Probably giving head somewhere. Who knows? 
I guess so. It makes me wonder why Logan was looking for him. He even called him by his name instead of with honorifics. I hope Coach Gill isn't in danger. It is a little suspicious. Have you forgotten that the Leonard family isn't exactly saintly either? I wouldn't be surprised if they had some sort of deal going on. Maybe with my family as well. For all we know, the Grams might be involved in this as well. <sighs> Why must our families be this complicated? You tell me. But honestly, I don't care. I just want to get some naps before Mr. Stone comes here and starts giving us a boring prose poem lecture. You're so mean sometimes. You know me. Anyway, wake me up when he comes. Mm. Morning, cla Morning class. Mr. Parker, for once, walked into the classroom devoid of life. Looking like he hadn't slept a wink at all. He wondered if it had something to do with Coach Gill being away. Maybe I should talk to him later. He looked at Mark, who was still sleeping peacefully with his backpack as his pillow. It was scary how he could sleep whenever and wherever he wanted. I actually kind of like math. It's weird. But this was not the time to be amazed. He told you to wake him up when Mr. Parker arrived, so you did. Ugh, five more minutes. Mr. Parker's here, wake up. Already? He slowly lifted his head, taking his time to glare to glance at your lit literature teacher before going back to his initial position with the grunt. Now I'll nap some more. Well, I already woke you up, so my job was done. Mm. Class finished in a flash. You looked at Mark, who was just waking up from the best nap of his life as you pushed your books back in your backpack. Ooh, that was a relaxing nap. You should have paid attention to class. Nothing to pay, pay attention to if our professor wasn't even mentally there to begin with. Who was right, the session was not engaging at all due to Mr. Parker being distracted the whole time. What's with him anyway? I wish I knew. You want to talk to him? I'll wait here. Yeah, I should go check up on him. Cool, let me know when you're done. Time for more naps. Even if Mark was a big cat, he enjoyed his cat naps way too much to the point it was concerning. You wondered if it was the same with for Lars, but for now, the way Mr. Parker acted this morning was more concerning, so he approached him as he was getting ready to leave the room. Mr. Parker, please wait. Yes, is there something you need, Walter? Ah, no, I just wanted to ask if you're okay. You don't look like you're enjoying teaching this morning. Oh, was it that noticeable? You nodded. I see. What's wrong, Mr. Parker? Did something happen? Everything's okay, I just feel a little bit anxious. About? I have a meeting coming up, so it's just nerves. Don't worry. Ah, if you say so. I'll head back now, okay? Is there anything else? Nothing, I just wanted to check up on you is all. He smiled reassuringly at you, but you knew for sure there was more to it than that. As he turned around, you poked his back with your fingers. I'm here if you need to talk, just wanted to let you know. See you later. In the end, you didn't get to ask him about your coach, so you didn't wait for his reply and immediately went back to your seat, where Mark was seemingly enjoying his short-lived nap. Finished. Mm-hmm. What should we do next? Lunch, I guess. Off to the cafeteria? I know a place. Oh, lead the way. I knew you'd take me here. You're starting to get good at connecting dots, huh? Or maybe you've gotten that predictable. Stop being smart. Come get your ass here and sit down. You just don't want to admit defeat. He shrugged while putting his backpack in front of him to take out what looked like lunch boxes. Anyway, we're having box lunch. Now, who said eating packed lunch out of a putterware container was a depressing experience? I did. You're about to have lunch out of a putterware container. And? Ugh! Plus, I'm not eating you alone. Here, your share. He handed you the other lunch box that was in his hands. What? You made them? Of course. On paying more attention to the lunch box that was in your hand, you noticed something suspicious about it. Hey, those are mine! You didn't make those lunch boxes, did you? Duh, of course I didn't. I can't cook. Big Kitty gave them to me this morning when you left in a hurry. You pushed me out. Details, details. I almost thought you made them. My life is a lie. Stop being so dramatic and eat the lunch already. I'm on it. Did you find out about Mr. Stone? No, he didn't tell me. I wasn't able to ask about Coach Gill either. Hmm, interesting. I may know a thing or two. It's only guesswork, though. Oh, what's your guess? Well, supposedly one of the higher-ups is visiting. My guess is that Mr. Stone is involved in welcoming them somehow. Ah, uh, was I right? He did tell me that he has a meeting coming up soon. Figures. I wonder who it is. Uh, no idea. I don't know what they're here for, either. I guess it must be someone really important for Mr. Parker to be that anxious. I wouldn't say that's entirely true or wrong, but to me, he's just an awkward and anxious person. Haven't you seen him? He freezes whenever someone new talks to him. He didn't want to talk to me for the first time, though. Was it really his first time talking to you? Hmm? Nothing. Even if it was someone important, I personally think he has nothing to worry about. As awkward as he is, he's a good teacher. He won't have any trouble coming coming from how he teaches, that's for sure. Huh, surprising coming from you. Why? I don't know, you just seem like you don't enjoy his classes. To be fair, you don't look like you're really getting along with anyone at school outside of me and Avi. 
Me not enjoying his class doesn't mean his teaching methods are bad. I just already know what he's talking about, so I'm bored for the most part. I see, that's a very fair point. I didn't think of that. Also, you're not wrong. I have many acquaintances, but not friends. I'm all aware that they think I act superior towards him. Well, you sort of are. I am. You of all people should know. Right. Don't you ever consider being a little bit more, I don't know, humble? Why should I? I don't feel like being humble. There's nothing to gain from being humble, especially towards people I really don't want to interact with. It's a pain in the ass, a waste of energy and time. I'd rather invest my energy on someone I can trust than with people where I have to pretend that I'm a nice, accommodating person. I think you're nice and accommodating, though maybe you don't show it, but I know you really are. I know I'm not. Maybe that's what you think, but I think you really are. It might be a little bit biased because you've been nothing but nice and accommodating towards me aside of when you're being sassy and cheeky. That's what I like about you. B whatever. I know I'm not. Right, right, whatever you say. Mark was a person who would stand his ground and stick with it, knowing what trying to change his mind, knowing that trying to change his mind would be a vain attempt. You chuckled and went back to eating your lunch with him. Daw. I'm full. It barely filled me, but that will do for now. You should have told me I could give you my share. You didn't offer. Huh. It's unlike you to actually wait for someone's offer. We still got some free time before our next class. Wanna head out or something? Did you just... Fine, let's head out. Where to? I don't know, back to the soccer fields, I guess. You really like going there, don't you? I feel bad for the playground. I remember you told me you went there a lot. Only if I'm outside of school, the soccer field is my nap place. Are you going to take a nap? If we got enough time, sure. Screw that. I'll go catch a quick nap. What am I going to do with you? Love him. You know, actually, let's head in for a bit. I need to take a leak. <laughs> okay. You and Mark went back inside where he immediately rushed towards the bathroom while you waited for him hanging around the area. As you walked along the hallways, you found yourself stopping in front of the gym doors, peeking inside through the small small glass panels revealed nothing but Talbot and his team practicing without their coach present. You hoped that you'd find Gil in there, but that was all that was. Wishful thinking. You turned back and walked along the hallways again, still waiting for Mark. Wait, the scent. Familiar scent around the hallway stopped you in your tracks. Mark, who had just finished doing his business, approached you from behind to check up on you. What's up? You smell that? It's so familiar. Uh. He tilted his head up and sniffed the air discreetly, then acted like nothing happened since he realized it might have just made him look stupid. No, it only smells like despair here. Maybe a hint of expensive perfume. He was right. High well enrollment rate was low, and the curriculum wasn't the easiest. Tuition was definitely expensive as well. That's it! Despair? No, the expensive perfume part. I know the scent. Mm, I don't know. It feels... It has that niche feel to it, for sure. Whoever wore it might be loaded since it could be custom made or... One of those exclusive perfumes. Oh, really? Yes, how is it familiar to you? Reminds me of my dad. I know he smells like this. That's quite the creepy wording, but I get it. Sort of. Maybe it's just the same perfume. Let's head back to the soccer field. Finally! Oh, actually. Ugh, what is it now? It's my twin. The one that doesn't even want to talk to you? You nodded. Pick it up, then. Up until now, you'd been trying to get him to talk to you to Novil, but when he actually called you now, you hesitated. Your finger hovered around the screen, then froze when you were about to answer the call. Mark had started to look annoyed from the constant phone ringing, so you felt pressure to answer the phone. It's me, Walter Graham. You know you don't have to say that with me. I heard you've been looking for me. What's going on? Just wanted to ask you if you're doing okay. I'm fine. I don't believe that's the reason, though. Um... Hearing his voice was a little bit nerve-wracking to the point you felt your mouth getting dry. There was a lump in your throat as you tried to form something coherent to say. <sighs> Hey, Walter, relax. I'm not going to chew you out. You can tell me what's going on. I've been trying to find out about the pendant in my possession. Oh. What about it? I have someone who owns a pendant like mine and found out that my pendant is incomplete. Do you happen to know anything about it? Mm, I don't think so. I just thought it was something old and that's it. I see. Do you have one as well? The pendant? Yeah, I think so. Oh, can I see? Sure, when I know where to put it. It's probably somewhere in the storage room. Okay. I need to wait until Father gets back, though. Oh, is he out again? Yeah, he said he's going to Highwell. Highwell? That's where I am! Ah! I probably shouldn't have told you that. I see. Well, don't ask me about it. But Dad's here. I might be able to meet up with him for a bit. I miss everyone at home. I don't know where he is in Highwell or what he's doing there. Come to think of it, the familiar scent near the hallway. Was he really here? So. How have you been? Where you got too deep into your own imagination, Herbert's voice snapped you out of it. 
Him calling you was already surprising, but now he asked you about your well-being? Couldn't help but think there was something going on with him. But you didn't want to get him hanging up with all your questions. Ah! I'm doing good. What about you? I'm fine. Being in a call with him made you realize how much you really miss talking with him. I would have sound more excited with about talking with him again, but you also had nothing to talk about. Both of you stayed quiet until he decided to break the ice. It's been a while since we last talked, huh? Yeah, it's been like months. I'm surprised you called me, actually. <laughs> don't ask me why, I don't know either. So I just feel bad about you looking for me every time you call mother. I seem to do that a lot, sorry. It's fine. Should have tried to be more available for you. It's okay, I understand you've been busy with things. And you also knew that it was part partially your fault that things turned sour between you two. Thanks for whatever happened during your childhood. This might seem weird, but you stopped talking to me because you were dealing with a lot of things and not because you hated me, right? No, I don't hate you! I'm glad. I'm sorry for not being there when you needed it. Now, even if you did, there was nothing you could do. I see. But, thanks. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Can I call you sometime? I'm not opposed to it, but no guarantee I'll pick it up. I see. I'll get going now, so goodbye for now. Love you, Herbert. I'm proud of you. I'm sorry. First, you were contemplating whether to tell them that you cared for him despite everything. But you felt guilty about what happened, but knowing that this might be your only chance of talking with him, you went for the strike. The silence was so loud that you felt like crawling out of your skin. His reply wasn't any better either, but at least he didn't say anything bad about it. Hanging up now. Finishing the call had you standing in the school hallways by yourself since Mark got a phone call of his own while you were still in a call with Herbert. Even though you had run into him in the classroom, you still didn't want to miss each other, so you waited until he came back. Fortunately for you, though, he went back almost immediately once you put your phone back into your pocket. Sorry about that, wasn't expecting to get a phone call earlier. It's okay, I just finished anyway. Cool, let's head into our classroom instead. We don't have much time now anyway. Oh, okay. Standing by the teacher's desk was none other than Talbot. He seemed to be glaring at your friend for some reason. Mark wasn't someone who would back off from a challenge, so he glared back at him as well. Once they were done with their stare down, Mark stomped off towards the closest available seats while Talbot left the classroom angrily. Of course we ran into him. Let's just ignore that guy. <laughs> anyway, you're going to be free this afternoon. I should be. What's up? Cool. We'll be heading to my place right after school then. What for? You'll see. Can't just tell me now. It's time to drink Unfortunately. water. Unfortunately. It's Damn. time to drink water. Well, do I need to bring anything this time? Nah. It's time to drink water. Quick. Oh, what is it? Nice it's try. It's time to drink water. He wasn't intending to tell you to begin with, so there was no use convincing him to tell you about his plans. You let your upper body rest on the desk as you waited for the class to start. Looking at your friend whose head was resting on the desk, with the back the backpack as his makeshift pillow, you wondered if you should also do the same. But it didn't seem like time was on your side. You weren't that sleepy anyway. Plus, Mark needed someone to wake him up, and the someone was you. After waiting for about ten minutes or so, the professor finally arrived in the classroom. As expected, Mark was fast asleep. Even when the professor talked, he didn't even budge. Mark. Still early, just a little bit more dad. Faced the other ways, he complained about waking up early. You didn't want him to embarrass yourself, so he shook his body as hard as you could while telling him that he wasn't home. Class is starting. He eventually woke up, eyes half open, hair disheveled. Once he realized he wasn't at home, he quickly fixed his hair in a hurry. But there was a common, elegant aura when he did that. Unlike most people, he certainly had class, you thought. Would have liked falling asleep throughout the class. You didn't tell me not to wake you up. Nah, thanks for waking me up. Didn't want to make a fool of myself that looking like a hobo. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> Seems sleepier than usual. What's up? Just had a rough night is all. Oof. Well, it doesn't matter. Once we get through this class, we'll head over to my place and then I can take a nap. After you show me what you wanted to show me, of course. Of course, anything you need. Anything? Terms and conditions apply. Eh. You spent the rest of the free time with Mark having a chat over things irrelevant to the plans you'd be having after. <sighs> Even though the class was somewhat boring, it passed without a hitch, thanks to Mark making it more bearable by telling you small remarks every time the professor said something silly. As it was time to leave, both of you packed your books. Once you were done, you two left the classroom and headed towards the outside. We're taking the bus from Bublix, right? Yep, the only way to reach my house faster. Okay. I should let Lars know I'll be late today. Do you have to report everything to him? I don't, but I don't want him to worry about me coming home late. Hmm. Fair enough. You pulled out your phone and looked for Lars's number so that you could text him. After finishing texting, you put it back into your 
to pack in your phone and head to the bus stop by Publix with Mark. Eh, it's so crowded. It really is. I wonder what happened. It's not this crowded usually. No idea. We're getting on the first bus whether it's cramped or not. Why not wait for the next one? Because I insist. Along with you and Mark, there were some familiar faces you usually saw at school waiting by the bus stop. Standing next to the sign was someone from Mr. Parker's literature class. Next to her was the girl who helped you grab your pen under the table just a while ago during second period. It was embarrassing, so he pretended not to see her. Aside of obvious average Highwell University students, there were some white-collar workers from, with their own signature briefcases, white-collared shirts, and black trousers. Some of them wore suits, which made them look like they belonged to a higher class than most of the people standing here. You mentioned that to Mark, but then he made a valid response. They wouldn't be waiting for the bus if they were high class. One could make a counterpoint for that, but it was a discussion for another time as it was time for boarding. As you two made your way onto the bus, he then pointed at the Siamese cat person who was sitting inside an expensive-looking car smoking what you would call an e-cigarette, and he was definitely someone associated with and exhibiting the characteristics of an upper social class. This made you realize how, some wealthy, how wealthy some people in Highwell are. Once the bus was full, it closed its doors and left the station. After the ordeal of cramming yourself onto the cramped, moving cuboid, which people called a bus, you managed to reach Mark's place in one piece. There was a schedule change, and you realized it was a touch late. If you'd waited until the next bus arrived, which was a few seconds after yours left, like some of your classmates, you wouldn't have had to go through what you'd gone through, but Mark insisted on boarding the first one. That was awful. Let's not take the bus during peak hour next time. You were the one who wanted to take that bus. Anyway, let's head in. I'll order something to eat, too. Oh, okay. As Mark fiddled with the console by the gate, your phone rang as loud as it could. It made you... Both you and Mark jump in surprise. Ah! Jeez, that's so loud. Sorry. Mark's constant complaining made you feel self-conscious, and you picked it up without looking at the caller's name. Hello? Oh, thank goodness you picked it up. I texted you back a few times, but you haven't replied. Oh, Lars just got off the bus. What's up? I wasn't home the whole day as I was visiting a friend, but it seems like you have a guest at home as well. And it caused quite the commotion. Wait, what? It's easier if I just put him on the speaker. Let me do that. Hey, kiddo. Oh, Uncle Ross, what's going on? A lot. Got some calls from the neighbor about a suspicious person hovering around your place. Heart skipped a beat. Did they finally catch the stalker? Well, it happens that he might not be our guy. It's just someone you know, or so your housemate claims. Wanted to know if that's true, that you know them. Oh, what do you mean? It's another tiger guy, yellow fur, bushy eyebrows. Said his name was Torihiko from Waterfront Village. I know no Torihiko from Waterfront Village, so I detain them for now. Oh! Well, do you know the lad? I actually do. He's a friend of mine. So he's not our guy. No, there's no way he's a stalker. He's from Waterfront Village, like he said. I see. I'll release him then. You should head back now. I'm at my friend's place. We'll make sure that you wrap up whatever you're doing with your friend. Head back as soon as you can. Alrighty. Now return this phone and release your friend. Sorry about that. It's okay. Thank you for your help, Uncle Ross. My pleasure, kiddo. Sorry to ask you this while you're out and about, Walter. But if you can head back as soon as you can, it would be nice. Yeah, I'll let Mark know. Sounds good. I'll see what I can do meanwhile. Thank you and sorry for the trouble, Lars. It's okay. I'll hang up now. Mm-hmm. See you in a bit. Okay. Seems like something urgent happened. Well... You told Mark about what happened at your house and how Tora was detained for being mistaken as a stalker. Well, I guess this changes things. How so? I was about to show you something related to my pocket watch, but now that Tora's here, I suppose we should head over to your place now. Pocket watch? Wasn't it missing? Yes, but with Tora here, I might be able to show you the pocket watch instead. Oh, did you find your pocket watch? Yes. Okay, let's head back then. Yeah, I guess we won't have dinner at my place tonight. I'll ask Lars to make us dinner. Fuck yeah! This favorable change of plans put in motion, you brought out your phone once again and texted Lars about tonight's dinner. A fancy car approached the gate while you were tapping away at the phone. As the gate opened by itself, Mark's disapproving tongue clicking could be heard. That could only mean one thing. As expected, Rye got out of the car. It felt intimidating. Marco, I didn't know you were having someone over. Mark glared at him for giving, before giving his answer. We're just leaving. Since you didn't want to come off as having no manners, you bowed down a little bit while greeting him. Hello. Hello, young man. May I ask where you two are headed off to? Eh, felt like you had to be careful not to say something wrong, so you stole a quick glance at Mark, who in return shrugged at you. Running to my place. Is that so? Rye folded his arms before bringing one hand onto his chin as if he was thinking hard about something. You didn't dare to interrupt his thought process, so you stood there waiting until he was done. Allow me to take you boys there, then. It doesn't seem like the bus will be here for another ten minutes. We'll wait for ten minutes, then. I insist. Come, it'll be faster this way. His hand was already placed on your back as he slowly pushed you into his car, depriving you of a chance to think about his offer. As you made your way inside, Mark reluctantly sat next to you. 
felt like you're being kidnapped and coerced into a less than favorable situation. Well, in reality, it was just Mark's dad taking you home with his fancy car. When Rai said it would be faster, you didn't think it would be within 15 minutes fast. Usually it would take about half an hour or so by bus. Arriving at your place, unlike what Lars told you, there was no lo longer commotion or even signs of it. The only change was you noticed was the presence of a rundown car in the driveway. The same one Tor Tor drove you around Waterfront Village in. We're here. We can see that. Let's get off, Walter. I'll be around, so once you're done, I'll pick you up. Meh. Thank you, Mr. Rai. You're welcome. Ugh, he's totally ruined my vibe. <laughs> it's not that bad. He seems nice. That's what he wants you to think. Mark was the one living under the same roof as him the whole time, so you couldn't argue about whether his dad was a nice person or not. It was not your place to make that judgment. But you were... But you personally thought he was a nice person. Maybe a little bit intimidating and scary, but nice regardless. Oh, you've come back. Walter! As soon as Tora noticed your presence, he got up and rushed towards you with a wide grin on his face, seemingly going in for a hug. Even though he was fast, he was nowhere as fast as Mark, who stopped him from mauling you into his embrace. You can greet him without hurling that slab of meat at your, of yours at him. I'm so happy you helped me get out of that hell. He was so rough with me. Uh, who? That landlord of yours. I think I would meet someone so strong. No, someone stronger than my senior. Huh, I know he looks strong, but I didn't expect that. What did Uncle Ross do to you? Well, he started with my... Okay, stop with that. How did you know where Walter lives? I believe I never told you his address and only asked you to drop it off by mail. Oh, I ran into your artist friend and gave him a ride home. Of course you did. Hey, I'll be making dinner now. Oh, I'll help you out. It's okay. I don't plan on making everything grand, so take it easy. I see. Let me know if you need any help then. Will do. Getting hugged by three big kitties. This is the dream. Ah, right. Here's your pocket watch, Mark. At least you didn't forget to bring it with you. Of course not. I've been an errand boy since forever. Not sure if you should be proud of that. It's what I do best. Did you drive all the way from Waterfront Tour? Of course, I always enjoy a car trip. Sounds boring. So, what will you be doing now that you've delivered Mark's pocket watch? <laughs> I haven't thought about it. I'm being surrounded by idiots. Mark let out a protest along with a face palm, telling Tori that he shouldn't have been that reckless. I just didn't think it through. I heard from the inn how important this was to you, so I rushed here without second thoughts. Ugh. Even after I told you to just mail it to me. You know how bad it is with deliveries? I didn't want them to lose it. You can stay at my place. Uh, you sure? Will your dad agree to it? On second thought, you can stay on the street. Oi, this is the thanks I get. Like I said, I didn't ask you to come. With his pleading falling on deaf ears, Tor turned his attention to you, ears flat, eyes teary. I don't suppose you could host another tiger friend? I don't mind, but I need to ask my landlord about it. Really now? I can't just ignore a friend in need. You're the best! How about the landlord? He actually suggested me to stay here. I heard what happened from him. Oh. <sighs> as long as you're not causing him trouble. I won't. Haven't you seen how useful I was at the end? <laughs> I can't deny you're good at what you're doing. I guess I'll just deal. Deal with what? Nothing that concerns you. Okay. I'll only be here for a bit, so don't worry about me staying here forever. Ah, so you like having a vacation? Exactly like that. So, Mark, now that you got your pocket watch back, want to tell me what's the deal with it? How impatient, since you're eager here. He handed you his pocket watch, which seemed well kept and polished. Opening the cap, which he had assembled just now, revealed an intricate steampunk-like design that you don't see often. Okay, you tell me what's the deal with it. Huh? I'm supposed to tell you what's wrong with it? On inspection, there was nothing wrong with it. The hands were working, the dials were functional, nothing seemed out of ordinary. Oh! There are two second hands, both sweep seconds and subdial seconds. Why are you still here? <laughs> I'll help Lars in the kitchen then. <sighs> Spoiling the fun. He was right, there are two second hands. I thought it was just a not like others design, but then I realized it looked rather out of place. And now that you mention it, the one in the center looks a a little bit modern. The color's a bit off as well. Yeah, it seemed like it's not supposed to be there, but somehow it fits perfectly if you don't pay attention to it. This crown here, if you pull it up slightly, it allows you to adjust the hands, but if you press it down... Oh! The glass pops up and you can remove it. I've always messed with it, but I never knew what purpose it served. That's interesting. Well, here it is. I'm sure you could figure it out once you have all the parts. He lifted off the glass sheet where the extra second hand would be and handed it to you. So the thing in after opening the compartment, but even so, nothing happened when you did. You have obtained Mark's watch hand. It was wishful thinking anyway, but at least you were one step closer towards your goal. 
I'll let you know if I find something more about your pendant, but I have something else occupying my mind at the moment. The stalker situation? Exactly. I'll get to the bottom of this. Let me know if I can help you with it. Yeah. Hey, Lars asked if you could, too, could eat spicy food. I don't mind. I'd rather have something not spicy mild if I have no choice. Okay, I'll let him know. I didn't know you don't like spicy foods. I don't hate them. I just prefer to spend my day outside the bathroom. Understandable. You have a part of my pendant, so what now? I'll look into the whereabouts of the other parts. I need to find them. Fair. And how do you intend to do that? I don't know. I'll find a way somehow. Not very convincing. Hey, I know I'll manage that. Right, right. You talked with Mar with Mark about your next plan until it's time for dinner. Welcome, please have a seat. Don't welcome us, it's Walter's place. Oops, habits. <laughs> it's okay. I had Tor help me come up with something easy and qu quick to cook since we didn't have much time, but we still need to feed four big people. We end up making sweet and sour fish meatballs with bok choy and zucchini. It seemed white rice. This way, we only had to cook one dish, but we'll still be able to fill our stomachs just fine. Not every day we get to eat rice. This is fun. So, how does this work? It doesn't look like it'll be enough for us. That's the fun part. You just have to scoop the rice into your own bowl. Once you do, you just put some of the dish on top of your rice and mix it together. This will give you flavor to your rice. If you're not the type to mix your food, just eat it as is and then follow with a spoonful of rice. Huh. Okay. As you took the last bite of the meat in your bowl, you noticed there was still enough to feed another person. But everyone was seemingly full, so it had to be put into the fridge as leftovers. During the job, Lars excused himself while you three sat there in satisfaction, especially Mark. Did you like it? Yeah, it was so good, but I couldn't have another bite. You didn't exactly eat that much. I've noticed that too. Walter doesn't usually eat a lot. Mark and Tora, on the other hand. Oi, I have to maintain this physique. And I generally eat a lot. Hmm. How are you managing your body, Walter? Yours is, your body is like perfect. What? No, it's not perfect. He's just lucky he's got it all. The genes, looks, body, and... On second thought, he could use some more brain. Hey, that's not nice. Stop teasing him, Mark. Also, shouldn't you be going home soon? I saw someone waiting for you in front of the house just now. Ugh, he really waited until I was done. Your dad? Yeah. Lars walked towards the fridge and took the food you just had, grabbed a small styrofoam box inside the drawer, and poured the leftover food into it. I didn't know we had those. Oh, I just bought it today. Ah, oh, what are you doing with it? Your dad gave you and Walter right here, didn't he? Figured he might not have had dinner yet. Beats me. Here, make sure to remove the food from the box if he decides to reheat it. Heard it's fine if you accidentally consume melted styrofoam container one time, but best not to risk it. Nah, there's no need. I'm sure he had food. It's not like he'd enjoy eating homemade food anyway. What if he hadn't? I guess he'll just order food delivery. Just take it. You could eat it if he didn't want it. It's a win-win situation, no? Even though Mark was hesitating to accept, Lars didn't plan on giving up. Mark eventually took the food from his hand despite his initial protest. Fine, you're so persistent, jeez. Oh, also, can we have a word in private? Outside? Me? Who else? Okay. You see me once we're done, Walter. There's something I need to tell you as well. Oh, okay. What about me? Hmm. <laughs> Aww. Lars cannot stop his male wifeness. It was apparent that Mark wasn't too excited about Tor's appearance. He squinted his eyes as if he was sending a message with them. He figured he was joking, but it was hard to tell with him. Both Lars and Mark left the kitchen, and you were left with cleaning chores with Tora. He sure doesn't beat around the bush when it comes to showing his disapproval, huh? <laughs> I'm sure he was joking. Nah, even in private, he was still somewhat like that. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he didn't waste time and just reached for the gun when he talked to me in Waterfront. I see, I wonder why is that? I wish I knew. I don't think he hates you, though. He's just not the friendliest person towards strangers, I guess. Was he like that with you at first? Uh, I don't think so. He approached me first because he didn't bring a pen with him. <laughs> he just doesn't like me then. No, I'm sure he doesn't hate you. Doesn't mean he likes me. Come on, you get what I mean. Yeah, I'm joking. I'm sure he doesn't dislike me either. He just doesn't seem like someone who wastes time trying to befriend someone when he doesn't have to. Yeah, that's more like it. I know, I had a friend like that as well. Mark will eventually soften up. I don't blame him though, both Mark and my friend. They have the reasons to be like that. He definitely doesn't have any reason to be friendly towards me. I'm just assuming, but is his situation at home not good? He didn't sound too thrilled about hearing about his dad. Well, his relationship with his dad is not hostile, at least. Understandable. Heck, sorry, I shouldn't have talked about him behind his back. Let's get this done real fast. Eh, it wasn't anything bad, so it's okay. Hey, Walter, we're done. Oh, already? I was just about to start cleaning the dishes. I got it covered, Walter. You can talk with Mark. Alrighty, thanks for the help. No problem. I'll help as well. Awesome. What's up, Mark? 
I need your help with something, so listen up carefully. I know you think Andrew is a nice person, but I need you to keep an eye on him. Why's that? Something doesn't feel right about him. I don't know what, but my gut feelings are usually right. Should I really do that? I don't want to start something with anyone. Ask for details, agree or disagree. It should be. When da Andrew is sus, what would I need to do if I agreed? Nothing too involved. I don't want him to get suspicious. So I only need you to interact with him when you can. What's going to happen after that? I can't say for sure, but I need you to figure out what his deal is. That doesn't give me much to work with. I just need you to trust me on this. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry, my brain stopped working for a second. Yeah. <gasps> fine. I better not get in trouble because of this. You'll be fine, trust me. Hmm. Heading home now. See you tomorrow. Yep, see you tomorrow. Also, it might be worth looking into Big Kitty. He might know something about the pendant. No, oh, why do you think so? Just a gut feeling. Again. Mark gestured you to go back in as he left your yard. Once he got into the car, they immediately left the driveway. Small honk directed at you while you waved to Mark goodbye. He then rolled the window up after giving you a weak smile. Now you're left in front of alone in front of your house. Time to head inside. I should probably call Dad too, see if he's actually here. At least that was your plan until you saw another car pull up in front of your house, which stops you from heading in as the car looked familiar. In fact, it was so familiar that you couldn't help but smile when the passenger got out of the car despite feeling surprised about his sudden appearance. Dad? Son? Once again, he walked past the gate, he dropped his briefcase and gave you the tightest hug you'd gotten from anyone ever. <laughs> what are you doing here? I was about to give you a call. I'm on a business trip here, so I thought I'd surprise you. <laughs> Aww. May I come in? Oh, of course, yeah. Oh! Oh, I didn't expect you to have guests right now. Ah, right, this is Tor from Waterfront Village. He's on a vacation, I think. So he's staying here for a bit. Tori, here's my dad. Waterfront Village? That's quite far from here, isn't it? Yes, sir. Thank you for letting me stay here. Thank my son. I'm sure you already know about Lars. I feel like Uncle Ross would tell you about him. Uncle Ross? Did you? Ah, just call him that. Don't know why. I see. It's... Nice meeting you. Likewise, thank you for taking care of my son. It's the opposite. He's been taking care of me and I'm grateful. Okay, that's embarrassing. Can we talk about something else? <laughs> Do you want something to drink, Dad? We have cold water. I just had something before coming here. There's no need. Thank you. Okay. I need to do something in the kitchen. Come help me, Tora. Oh, huh, weren't we just there? There's something else. Come. Wait, stop my fire. How considerate of your friends to give us space. <laughs> I just noticed Edgar has heterochromia. <laughs> I guess so. How have you been, son? You haven't been calling us. I get worried sometimes. I've been well, sir, for not calling you at all. I've been quite occupied since I got here. Heterochromia. It's okay, I understand. Give me a call whenever you can, alright? Mm-hmm. I was really about to call you before you showed up out of nowhere, though. I believe you, son. To be honest, I only called because I heard you were here. Oh, did Herbert tell you that? Yeah, accidentally, though. Oh, did you two finally talk again? I can't say, but we talked over the phone this afternoon. That's good news. Maybe you'll start talking more. I really hope so. I have so much to catch up on, but I don't have much time. Ah, you're leaving? You just got here. I thought you'd be staying the night. I wish I could, but I have to go back to my hotel tonight. Maybe we could talk in the morning. I'm in high will until tomorrow night, after all. I'd love that. We have a plan for tomorrow, then. <laughs> I'd love to stay and chat more, but I'm not sure if the driver would appreciate that, so I'll have to leave now, son. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Oh, okay, it's great seeing you again, Dad. I missed you so much. Mom and Herbert, too. Me too, son. It's hard to say goodbye. 
Come stay with me tonight in the hotel room. Please don't make this sound weird. What's so weird about a dad wanting to stay with his son? It's the wording. People would get the wrong idea if they didn't know. Hmm. Oh, well, I'll tone it down if that's your wish. Didn't you say you were leaving? <gasps> you're, you're shooing me away? I never thought today would be this day my son wants me to leave. <laughs> I'm hurt. Okay, okay, don't give me that face. I'll see you out. Come on. Don't forget about our plans tomorrow. I won't. It's not like I have anything planned for tomorrow. Got it. I'll call you tomorrow and let you know where we're going. <gasps> Sounds good, Dad. See you tomorrow, son. Good night. What a handful your dad was, but his antics were one of the things you missed about home. And you were glad to see him tonight. Once you left your place, you locked the gate and headed back into the house while thinking fondly about home. Whew. Did he leave? Yeah, thank you for giving us space to talk, Lars. Glad to help. Sorry I was a bit dense, but I didn't, and didn't know what he was trying to do. It's okay, I know my dad wouldn't have minded if you guys stayed. Anyway, where were we? We weren't exactly doing anything. Oh. Well, how about sleep? We still need to give you a place to sleep on. Oh, right, I don't, I don't have any preferences as long as I have a mattress to sleep on. Okay, so you can sleep here in the living room if you don't mind. I have a mattress and quilt for you. That's perfect, it's gonna feel like home. You sleep in the living room at home? No, I mean the whole thing with futons and stuff. Just like when we stayed at Zen. Exactly! Ah, I see now. Oh, I need to mention that we might want to grab more groceries now that Tor is staying with us for a while. Oh, I brought my savings with me, so I can help you pay for groceries if you need to. Need me to. I don't want to stay here for free, so let me know if I can help with it. You don't have to. I have more than enough money for groceries. I see. Still, if you want me to cover some of the costs, just let me know. I'm not the kind of freeload. <laughs> How about you help me in the kitchen? Oh, I don't have any objections. That's settled then. You guys don't mind if I turn in early? Driving here the whole day was tiring. I've been wanting to lie down so bad since I got here. Of course, yeah. Let me grab the mattress and quilt for you. I'll help. Thank you. Be right back, Tora. Take your time. Lars. Hmm? I'm sorry about this. I'm not sure what you're talking about. What are you apologizing for? About taking Tori in. I know you enjoyed peace and quiet, but with him here, it's getting more crowded. There is no need for you to apologize for that. I'm glad you helped him, actually. You had the choice to not... To, you had the choice to not help him, but you didn't abandon him. That's what I like about you. What do you likes about me? What does that mean? Calm down, Walter. You're probably looking too much into it. Don't be weird. Aw, oh, thank you. So, yeah, don't apologize for helping someone. I got it. Thanks for reassuring me, Lars. Mm-hmm. Now let's grab the thing for him. Okay, so I'll get the quilt. As you returned to the living room, you saw that Tor fell asleep while sitting on the couch. Lars helped you lay down the mattress before you woke him up. Uh, you got your mattress. You can sleep there now. Did I fall asleep? Yeah, sorry for waking you up. It's okay. Whew, I must be much higher than I thought. Tor made his way towards the mattress while you and Lars got ready to head back into your bedroom. If you want to turn off the light, the switch is here. Ah, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, both of you. Yeah, no worries. Good night, Tora. Good night. Oh, I got a text. Checked your phone while making your way towards the bed. It was Mark who sent you a message. Just like he said he would. Who was that? <laughs> oh, you mean the text? It was Mark. Ah, I see. You're reading the same book from yesterday. What is it about? It's called Tunnel Vision. I think it's about someone who has the ability to see th and go through a tunnel. A tunnel? Not normal tunnels. They're like different timelines and such. Oh, I've never heard about it. You had this book but didn't know about it? Well, it's embarrassing, but I'm not the reading type. <laughs> I can see that. The shelves were a little dusty. <laughs> you own like 10 volumes of it. I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Is the book good? Yeah, I'm halfway through the book. The pacing is slow, but the characters are rather flat right now. But I can see that it's going somewhere. So I'm sticking with it until it gets interesting. I see. Maybe I should give it a read, maybe. Yeah, I'd say go for it. Do you want to read it now? Nah, I'm going to lie down and enjoy the night. Does reading not count as enjoying the night? Well, I don't like reading books. <laughs> Fair enough. And that is all the update. Well, yep, stay safe, have a good night, and I will see you all tomorrow.